How's it going? My name is Sora from PG Stats, and I am here right now to give you an announcement on the PGRU Season 3. And that is that we're switching from the algorithmic way of ranking our lists to now a panel-based way. Yeah, that's that's the news. Now, now, now hold on, okay? Just 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 stop, close the group chat, okay? Don't clip this. Listen, okay? Just just listen first. I gave you the end, so let's work up to that. Okay, let's let's take it one thing at a time, and let's start with a history lesson. So, PG stats, you know the whole deal. We're in the middle of this season two reveal. Today's top ten, Smash Ultimate, huzzah! You know the story goes with Dom, Zan, and myself beginning PG stats many years ago in Smash Wii U, and releasing five PGRs later, dipping into a top 100 to conclude everything, and now in Smash Ultimate, concluding our second PGR release. We've had some time in the scene, okay? Nowadays though, it looks a little bit different. The team is myself as director, practical task is the algorithmic designer and statistician, Popey, who is an amazing content editor, Stuart98, who's a really great fact checker and all around amazing person, and also our advisors like Alan and David, who are the co-founders of Panda and have taught us lessons along the way that have helped us steer clear of many things that other teams have kind of like fallen into. And lastly, don't forget Cut from Japan, who makes these amazing videos for all of us to see and uh, had a really good job at that. So enough about us, okay? We've done the top 50s, we've done all this, this panel, okay? So let's talk about the algorithm with this pride and anti-prejudice bit that we have for you now. So. We've been very proud of the algorithm up to this point. It offers a really great impartial angle to the scene by showing us these hidden bosses from domestic and foreign countries alike who have been putting in the work and have been earning those results on the PGR. Now I emphasize results because the PGR has always been a results based ranking and not a skills based one, which might seem like a surprise to some, but it's always been the goal to measure the best performing players in a set amount of time with the set parameters of the tournaments, the placements, the head-to-heads, and everything else. So, of course, when someone doesn't travel or doesn't make it to some events, there's always this tension or this conflict of this player not being ranked or this player being ranked too highly or too low because it's in conflict with what they performed at, okay? And of course, the algorithm has undergone many revisions as the scene has changed in size and frequency and scope, all sorts of things. And this has always been done organically so that the algorithm can keep up with the needs of the scene. But of course, now let's talk about the limitations of the algorithm because that's something that's always been a source of contention for players and fans alike. It's private. And this has always been a source of tension between fans and players alike. And we've maintained that in the past with Red Bull, the publishing rights that we have are something that are very special for the project because otherwise, if anybody had the algorithm, then anybody can make the list. And all of a sudden, these 50 players that we highlight over five days lose that spotlight and it's just spoiled for people inside the community, for people outside the community, namely teams. So the limitations of the algorithm also extend to the fact that we have not made a top 100 list because we maintain that the confidence in a 60th, 70th, 80th place using the algorithm is sorely lacking. With six months to play with, there's not a lot of data points, less than you'd think considering the fact that many international players don't interact with our domestic ones and vice versa. There's also international players who don't interact with other international players, which causes a slew of issues when it comes to getting great data to work with. So we've always kept it at top 50. And so the limitation of it being private, the limitation of it not extending beyond top 50 has pretty much led us to our decision today. So what? The panel, we're switching to it. We've done it for the MPGR, previously the Melee and Anmi system, and it's something that we have a lot of experience in. It's something that's gonna obviously be a big change in the format. Being the same as the MPGR is just going to need some curating in terms of getting the right panelists, diversifying it, and we're gonna take care of that. That's on me, we promise. But it's also effective immediately, meaning season three is going to feature the panel at the very end deciding who's going to be the top 100. Yes, you heard that right. We're also not only switching to the panel, but now extending the rankings to top 100. And lastly, this is not gonna change how the TTS operates. So now let's jump into the why. 
So the why. As stated earlier, the algorithm has its limitations from not being able to go past 50 very well and also the fact that it's private causing this tension. Now we can finally switch to the panel and go to top 100. But the reason that we really want to do that is because of this thing that Practical Task actually talks about in an article that he writes about the very issue, linked in the description below, and that's the moving target phenomenon. Every season, players have been both explicitly and implicitly mentioning that they could have attended this tournament and gotten these points, or they could have avoided this tournament and gotten more points because they wouldn't have suffered losses, or they wouldn't have endured placements that they otherwise thought they wouldn't have gotten. So what that essentially boils down to is players are looking less and less at becoming better players and more and more at becoming better participants in the algorithmic system. That means that people are going to now change their behavior based on the fact that they're getting ranked, which we wanted to avoid. But that's also not so fair because now players don't exactly know what counts for them or against them, and at the same time, fans have a tough time following or tracking the results of the PGR, and then they get surprised understandably so, when the results come out and it doesn't match their preconceived notions. And we also figured out that because of that, it was de-incentivizing attendance. Right now, switching to a panel, that's going to incentivize attendance because of the following. One, now that you're actually changing perception of your competitive persona actively, you're gonna go, you're gonna want to go out to tournaments more. You're gonna want to participate. You're gonna be on vods. You're gonna be on this, that, and the other. And whatever you do on Twitter, whatever you do on social media, now builds a part of your persona. Beforehand, tournaments when they added points or took away points from your ranking. Then you were frozen, you were locked into decisions that you didn't necessarily want to make, and now you don't have to worry about that because bad losses can be understood as bad losses, and understandably so, and not as punishing as the algorithm was doing, which is all it was learning to do based on the fact that it was impartial and just factoring a loss as a loss. So let's move into the how. So the how is built on the fact that we're going to look at these panelists and arduously source them from commentators to TOs to even players themselves. Now you might think, oh my gosh, a player can vote on the ballot that they might be on? Yes, but they cannot vote for themselves. This has been something that the MPGR Melee It On Me has had before, and it hasn't posed an issue. We don't expect it to pose an issue now. We're going to obviously clean the ballots, take out outliers, toxic ballots, etc., and essentially make what we've been making within the MPGR, but now for PGRU. It's also gonna be by recommendation. So if you put in work in the scene as a seeder or a community leader, and it hasn't been necessarily so outwardly recognized within Reddit or social media, if you have a recommendation, send it to us, we'll verify it and you'll be part of the panel. There's gonna be no limit to it, but we're gonna to to take an exhaustive approach. And I promise you it's gonna be the best panel you've seen because it's gonna be diverse and source many different countries and regions. It's not gonna be NA centralized, at least in the sense that it's not gonna be mostly NA. And that's what I'm saying right now. And most of all, the results for the season are going to be given to the panelists. So they won't have to dig through Smash Wiki. They won't have to dig through brackets on Smash GG. They're going to get the data as we've combed it. And they're going to see head to heads and placements so they can base their own decisions on these players solely on the data, their perception and their personal opinion. But now let's talk about the importance of the TTS. The TTS stays the same. Labels are the same. S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier. They're all going to be there. Tournaments are still going to be rated on either their general entrant count or the number of PGR players there. It's not combined, so don't get that confused. And that's going to remain the same. And even after this PGR comes out and it's 100 players, then we're just going to stack it more. And you're going to see that change hopefully benefit many of the scenes who have these players who travel too much or don't travel enough. And so the points are going to be allocated into high, medium, and low. When you look at the TTS, you're going to see that there's high S tiers, medium S tiers. That's basically like an S plus or S minus. That's just for your perception. So again, winning an S tier is still going to guarantee clout, but since we're not using the algorithm anymore, whether it's a high one, a low one, a medium one, there's no points to necessarily gain or lose. It's just the perception of you winning an S tier is going to be seen by the panelists. So now let's talk about the TTS patch notes and more. We're going to go ahead and factor in Area 51 for the first time ever, and they're going to be the same value as the players that are in 31 through 50. We thought this was not only fair and a long time coming, but it also just spreads out the influence of the PGR more in terms of getting players of all varieties to attend tournaments of all kinds. 
We're also dividing the TTS into three regional breakdowns when it comes to the multipliers. USA gets its own 1.0, nothing new. Japan gets its same 1.25, but now we're going to have everywhere else, which is Mexico, which is Canada, which is any country in Europe, Australia, etc. There's going to be a bonus of 1.66, so one and two thirds, and that's basically what we're going to go ahead and try for this season, all things considered. Now, some people have mentioned with Japan's increased presence on the current PGR that there might be over centrality now in Japan happening as well. Well, we just want to say that if every PGR player from Japan attends their tournament, they will not reach S tier. At most, they can get A tier. The only way that Japan can reach an S tier tournament is either by entrance or by their entire PGR squad going and outside PGR players. So essentially what we know as S tiers to basically be. It won't just be them in a room creating S tiers on their own. It'd have to be all those people or people from out of the region. So worry not. Now for something I think a lot of people will also enjoy because it's been requested and it's something that I think will help the seasons make more sense. We're going to be releasing mid-season Rising Stars reports. More details on that coming out soon, but essentially in the middle of the season, we want to highlight five players who are not ranked or are making noise as people who are potentially going to be on the next PGRU. Again, more details on that soon, but we basically want to give that spotlight to the people who haven't been ranked before who are doing amazing. For example, this season it was Meister. Wasn't ranked last season and now he's going to be where he is. So for everybody else, that's the announcement. We go from algorithm to panel. It's been years using the algorithm, changing it, molding it, adapting it. And I think that this decision is gonna be something that's gonna serve the community in the long run for the better. Why? I explained it already in the video, but if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in the comments, at PGSats on Twitter, DM me, at PG underscore Soir, or DM Practical Tasks, who is the mastermind behind the algorithm, at Practical Tasks. We're here for you and we're listening and we firmly believe that the algorithm's done a ton of work, but there's always room for improvement. And in this case, the switch to panel system is that improvement. For everybody else, that's PG Stats. Uh, season three is now live. Stay tuned to Smash Center, which we're gonna see coming up in a couple days as we review Genesis and see what Kony and I have to say. If you have anything else, again, we're on Twitter, we're on social media, but for you, Thank you for listening and share this, comment, like it, tell us, um, tell us something nice and uh, have a good day. Enjoy the rest of the reveal and Genesis 7 is now live.